Athletes, especially fitness competitors and bodybuilders, are often considered to be extremely healthy. However, these online fitness influencers and bodybuilders actually die quite frequently. The most recent example, unfortunately, was Joe Lindner, the famous Instagram influencer called Joe Stetics, with over 8 million followers, who died recently at the age of 30. So what's the deal? Is muscle bad for you? Is it gonna kill you sooner? So the purpose of this video is to give you some answers. Do it! Now, to start, we have to begin with the unfortunate passing of Joe Lindner. He was 30 years old, in incredible physical shape and fitness. We don't have an autopsy report on his death yet, but some of his relatives speculate it might have been due to a genetic aneurysm. Aneurysm is a bulge in the wall of a blood vessel that eventually bursts. Joe's aunt allegedly also died to an aneurysm at a young age a few years earlier, so he might have had an underlying genetic predisposition to an aneurysm that was triggered by his lifestyle. Now, there are many things that can increase the risk of aneurysms or other forms of cardiovascular disease, such as high blood pressure, but it's no secret to anybody that Joe was also using performance enhancing drugs and recreational steroids. If you look at him, then his physique is unachievable naturally, and he himself was very open about his use of steroids. Now, his coaches and people people around him did say that he wasn't using like massive amounts of steroids and he was monitoring his blood work quite regularly. But you can't deny the fact that anabolic steroids do raise blood pressure and increase the risk of cardiovascular disease as well as aneurysm. There is a positive association between oral steroid use and abdominal aortic aneurysm. Long-term steroid therapy is also associated with a rupture of abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's known that long-term use of anabolic steroids impairs cardiac function, promotes poor lipid profile, raises blood pressure and makes the heart grow in size. There are also theories that he had just taken the booster shots for the thing you know I'm talking about. But again, we don't know the actual cause of death of Joe Lindner yet, and all of this is mostly speculation. But we can safely say that the use of anabolic steroids didn't help him, it didn't reduce his risk of genetic aneurysm. If anything, then it probably increased his risk. And this is one of the biggest reasons, in my opinion, why these fitness athletes tend to die prematurely. They have a hidden genetic predisposition to a certain disease or a condition that gets exacerbated or activated by the toxicity of anabolic steroids and other performance enhancing drugs. Because not all bodybuilders die prematurely. If steroids alone would kill you prematurely, then you would see all the old school bodybuilders dead already. But most of them are still alive. Take Arnold, for example, he's 75 years old, and he still looks like in excellent health and he doesn't show that he's gonna die anytime soon. The reason he's still alive is probably that number one, back then the bodybuilders didn't use that large doses of steroids and number two, he probably doesn't have any genetic predisposing risk to cardiovascular disease, kidney disease or other medical conditions that get exacerbated by steroid use. I do think that professional bodybuilding at the professional level is generally unhealthy because you have to use a lot of steroids to reach a professional level and you also accumulate that much muscle mass. But natural bodybuilding where you're not using anabolic steroids and you have significantly less muscle tissue is generally safe and actually quite beneficial for your health. If you're not taking steroids, then you're not really able to build that much muscle either. Disappointed! So now let's talk about whether or not natural muscle is good for you or not. Higher lean mass is linked to reduced risk of neurodegeneration, obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and lower all-cause mortality, especially in the elderly. Muscle has the metabolic advantage of acting as a glucose sponge. The more muscle you have, the easier it is for your body to dispose of sugar and carbohydrates. Muscle tissue is also protective against aging and mortality. You see a progressive decrease in skeletal muscle tissue due to aging. This process is called sarcopenia, and it can happen at a rate of 3 to 8% per decade. Low muscle and strength are major risk factors for disease and mortality from all causes. Basically, if you have more muscle tissue and muscle strength specifically, then you are reducing your risk of mortality because of many reasons. Number one, you have better metabolic health, you have less risk of diabetes and metabolic syndrome, and you're also more protected against hip fractures and falling. So generally, having a bit higher muscle tissue is protective against chronic diseases and early death. And because of the fact that you will lose muscle the older you get, it is worthwhile to have like a backup store in your youth. If you have slightly more muscle tissue in your youth, then it's going to pay dividends when you're older because the older you get, the more muscle tissue you're going to lose. And if you have a little bit of extra muscle tissue when you're young, then you're going to just revert back to a slightly higher baseline when you're older. But how much muscle tissue is too much? I guess this is the main point. Clearly, if you have too much muscle tissue because of using anabolic steroids, it's going to be harmful even independent of the fact that you are using anabolic steroids. Too much mass in general, even if it's muscle tissue, will start to wear out your organs. It's going to actually inhibit your cardiac function at some point. 
if you look at the research, then there is some clear associations between certain body mass indexes and risk of mortality. A 2009 analysis of 57 prospective studies that included over 900,000 adults with an average age of 46 found that the lowest mortality was at a BMI of 22.5 to 25. At a BMI of 30 to 35, the average survival was reduced by 2 to 4 years. And at a BMI of 40 to 45, it was reduced by 8 to 10 years. The problem with BMI is that even if you have even a little bit of muscle tissue, then your BMI number would be slightly higher. Let's say you're lean and muscular, you have abs, but you also have plenty of muscle tissue, then your BMI could be somewhere around 27 and 28 which technically puts you into the overweight category. Now, it doesn't appear to increase your risk of mortality or early death or anything like that because your increased BMI is due to higher muscle tissue that has actually some metabolic benefits. But if your BMI becomes over 30 and you're not taking steroids, then chances are your BMI is at 30, not because of, you know, you, you obviously have a little bit of muscle tissue as well, but your BMI reaching 30 also means that you just have too much fat. <laughs> As a natural, it's very unlikely that you would be at 5% body fat with visible abs and you're also at a BMI of 30 or 35. To reach that, you would probably have to take steroids or to reach that as a natural would mean that you just have too much body fat. Based on the research, we know that having a BMI between 22 to 25 generally is associated with reduced mortality. If you are a natural lifter, you don't take steroids and you have some muscle tissue, you have some good muscle strength, you're athletic, you're fit and you're healthy generally, then it's still safe to have a BMI of maybe 27, 28 or something like that because the BMI increase will come from your muscle tissue. And having a BMI of 27 or 28 around there also means that you don't have you know, that much body fat. But if you reach a BMI of 30 and above, then chances are you just have too much body fat. Even if you have muscle, the increased muscle tissue at that point isn't really that beneficial because your BMI is already above 30, which increases your risk of mortality. For men, the healthy body fat percentage is around 6 to 15%, and for women, 14 to 25%. If you're above that, then it doesn't matter how much muscle you have. You're better off for your longevity to drop your weight until you reach a BMI of below 30 and ideally closer to 25 rather than 29. To maintain a BMI of 30, you would also have to be eating a lot of calories and eating too many calories is bad for longevity in any case. It's a trap. Just pure muscle mass isn't that healthy. It's the leanness and muscle strength that's more important. Compared head to head, then muscle strength appears to be more important for longevity and is linked to reduced mortality much more than muscle mass. And the best thing is that if you focus on muscle strength and getting stronger, you will already add plenty of muscle mass as well. You just won't become a mass monster. So moral of the story is that muscle tissue generally is beneficial for your metabolic health. It's at least going to reduce your risk of diabetes and obesity and other chronic diseases but having too much muscle tissue especially if you build the muscle tissue with using anabolic steroids or if you become too heavy if you have too much fat if you have a bmi above 30 then even the muscle tissue isn't going to really protect you that much you want to still maintain a good healthy bmi which for the lowest risk of mortality would be 22.5 to 25 but if you have slightly more muscle tissue then it could be around 27 28 as well but it should never be above 30 if you have a bmi above 30 and you have muscle tissue then chances are you just have too much body fat and the second more important point is that muscle strength is more important than muscle mass. You want to focus on the muscle strength. You want to build your muscle strength and in turn that will build you some muscle tissue as well. You just won't become too big. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification below as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.